welcome back. This is our last day of school this week. So we're going to get started with our sight words. And this is a fun one because you got chalk in your box and you got black construction paper in your box. So if you have an adult at home, you can ask them, hey, can I go outside and write with sidewalk chalk on the sidewalk or in the driveway? And if they're there and they can go with you outside, then you can do it outside. If your parent is busy and they can't come with you outside, then you have black construction paper, which is equally as cool to write your sight words with. So you need to get that chalk together and that paper out of your box. And we're going to write our sight words. So I'm just gonna go over them. I don't have um, chalk with me. So I'm just gonna spell them while you write them with chalk on your paper or on the sidewalk. Okay, our first word is she. S-H-E. She. Our next word is big. B-I-G. Big. Our next word is has, H-A-S. Our next word is my, M-Y, my. And our last word is look, L-O-O-K. Now, if you didn't get all those written, that's okay. You can hit pause on the video and you can keep writing and make sure you have them all written at least one time. And when you're done, come back and hit play. And we did so great with that, that it's time for another movement break. So, we don't need our chalk anymore, we don't need our paper, we just need our bodies. First, we're going to clap like a seal. So seals, they have their little fins up front and that's how we're gonna clap. good one. All right, next we're going to waddle like a penguin, which is going to get you ready for your movement break later. So make sure you really do this one good. Keep your feet close together. Okay, pretty good. I think we're ready to move on. So we're going to move on to our reading lesson with Miss Hall. Hi friends. Okay, we're going to do our last reading lesson for this week, and it's going to be about making connections. But before we talk about making connections, let's think back to what we did earlier this week. On Monday, we talked about making a prediction. Does anybody remember what a prediction is? A prediction is a guess about what's going to happen next in the story. Good. Then we also talked about the characters, which are who the story is mostly about. And then we talked about the setting, which tells us when and where the story takes place. So today we're going to talk about making connections. So when you make connections with the story, it makes you think about something or remind you of something that's happened. So when you make connections, you say things like, I think, or this makes me think about, or this reminds me of, or I remember. Okay, so we're going to read a couple of pages in the Diary of a Fly, and we're going to see if we can make connections to that part of the story. So if you open up your book to the very first page, June 7th, okay? It says, tomorrow's the first day of school. I'm so nervous. What if I'm the only one who eats regurgitated food? Can you connect with this part of the story? Does it make you remember or think of anything? What about your first day of kindergarten last year? Were you nervous? Just like Fly? That's making a connection to the story. If you turn the page over to June 15th, looks like that, it's about picture day. This one, Mrs. Hall can make a very big connection to. Last year, when I got my school pictures back, they were not very good at all. And it says on here that June 15th, my school pictures came out terrible. Mom says next time I better have all my eyes looking in the same direction. I can make a connection with this because I've had some pretty bad school pictures before. But you can make connections with lots of different things in a book. Remember that connections make you think about something or it reminds you of something. Okay? 
All right, guys, it is time for writing. So get out that blue workbook with the brain on it and open it up to page 11, which is a one and a one. So open up to that page. And you should have some sentences written already, right? And so for today, what we're gonna do is check our writing. So we're going to make sure we have a capital letter at the beginning of the sentence. And we're gonna make sure that we left spaces between our words. And then we're gonna check to make sure that we put punctuation at the end of our sentences. So we're gonna reread what we wrote. So mine says, my, and I have my capital M right there, perfect. My favorite animal is a cat. And I see there's my spaces. What about punctuation? Let me check. Oh my goodness. I forgot to put a period. That's why we have to check. Gotta put that in. There's my period because that's the end of that sentence. My next sentence says, it can purr. That's why kittens, cats and kittens, are my favorite because they can purr and make that cute little sound. So now that you have your writing looking fabulous, we're going to add a picture, which you have to have. So you can use crayons, which were in your box. I don't know, you might have markers, but crayons or markers, either will work. Or if you just have your pencil, that works too. So. If I said my favorite animal was a cat, should I draw an alligator? No. I'm going to draw a cat because that's what I wrote about. I'm going to draw a cat. So I'm going to get, I'm going to draw an orange cat. Here's his big body. Ears, legs, and a cute tail. So, and then now I'm not going to do a lot of detail because I don't want you to just have to watch me. But when you draw your animal, you can draw the animal, you could draw the setting, which is where your animal is. So I could draw my cat on a couch or climbing up a tree, right? Doing something cool. So make sure you draw a setting with your animal. All right, and when you are done with that, then you are done with writing for this whole week and you've written two sentences about your favorite animal and you should probably go and read those sentences to someone in your house so that they can see how good you did all right and we're good. all right it is time for self-selected reading so this is our fourth day this week so the number four is the one that you're going to color in after you listen to one of the stories read by a celebrity or you read one of the books from your box you can do either of those things, but you need to read one or listen to one and then color in this fence post. Now, after you've colored in this fence post, so that means that tomorrow on Friday or anytime over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, if you read a story from your box, any of those, or online, you might listen to another one, or your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or sister or brother or cousin, they might read something with you. And if they do, then that means you get to color in this last fence post. So that is your only homework, is to try to read with somebody so that you can color in your whole fence. All right? I hope you can do that this weekend. And that's it for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend.